If I divide this line into two pieces that are of equal length, that are both half, right? So if I divide it up like this, okay, so this is half and this is half, okay? I have divided up the line, the interval, into two objects that are half the size. Two objects that are a half the size. Okay, does that make sense? Uh, in exactly the same way, I, don't, I could divide it into smaller pieces if I like. I could go thirds, for instance. One, two, three. That's a third. 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 So I've got three objects that are a third the size. Okay, now, that's like, yeah. Well, what's the big deal, okay? Well, let's move up. This is the line. Let's consider well, it's a, a two-dimensional object. How about a square? That's a pretty quintessential two-dimensional object, right? So consider a square. Something different happens here, okay? So if I draw myself a square, here's one. Okay. Now, if I go, I want a square that's like a half-sized square, okay? A half-sized square. Because it's got two dimensions, right? If all of the dimensions here are halved, if all the dimensions here are halved, right? So if this was like, you know, 10 units long, this would be 5, 5, 5, 5, okay? I don't have two objects or two components that are half the size anymore, do I? How many do I have? I have four objects, right? Four objects. Now, keep in mind, right, I'm using the word size, I don't mean area, right, because these are not half the area. They're half the size, by which I mean each of the dimensions, uh, uh, length and width, have been halved, okay? So I've got four objects that are half the size. Okay, four objects. Now, you can see what happens if I apply this similar logic up here, right? If I divide it into objects that are a third the size, how many of them am I going to get? get? I'm going to get nine of them, right? Let's just quickly draw here. Okay, nine objects that are a third the size. Okay, we're going to do it one more time, right? One dimension, two dimensions, three dimensions. All right, consider a cube. This is going to get a little tricky to draw, but that's okay, right? So here's a cube. Now it's got three dimensions, length, width, and height. So if I halve all of them, if I halve all of them, how many component pieces am I going to get? Hmm. Well, on the front here, right? On the front here, be careful. I'm going to start drawing and maybe you'll see what happens, right? I'm going to get little cubes. I actually don't even want to draw the rest of that part. This is a bit tricky. Okay, have a look at this. What have I drawn? I've only drawn half of the cube, haven't I? Right, can you see this is like, as it were, the front half? Let me get another color so you can see how much of the cube I have drawn. I've drawn this part here that's in front of the red. Okay? The reason why it's half is because all of my dimensions have been halved, right? So for instance, the width of my new square, my cube, my little ones, is exactly half the width of my original cube, right? <coughs> Excuse me. The height of each of my new cubes is exactly half the height of my original cube. And therefore my depth here is exactly half of the original depth. Okay, so that means if that's half, I need to, to do the rest of them. There's another four hiding behind. Do you see that? Okay. So let's draw the button. <coughs> okay, can you see them hiding there? Right? It's not too bad. So what have I got? How many cubes? Count them up. I have four in the front, four in the back. I have eight, right? I have eight objects that are half the size of the original cubes. Okay, I've got eight of them. 
Now, I promise I won't make you draw the next one because, I don't know, I have enough trouble drawing this one, okay? You can guess though, you can calculate. Look at the pattern here. You don't need to draw this next one to know how many little cubes there will be if I make them a third the size. How many are you anticipating? It's going to be 27, aren't they, right? Because putting it this way, you can have 9 on the front, and then 9 in the middle, and then 9 at the back. That's 27. 27 objects. OK. That's enough examples. Where do dimensions come into play, right? We're going to do it in reverse. This is a three-dimensional kind of object, right? Three-dimensional. So you notice, see these two numbers here? These numbers are not coincidental or random, right? What kinds of numbers are they? They're cubic numbers, right? In fact, this is 2 cubed, and this is 3 cubed. Why is this one 2 and this one 3? Why is that? Very good. This 2 corresponds to this half. You see that? And this 3 corresponds to this third. You with me? OK, reverse. We had 4 and then 9. Right, let me clean up that line. So what are those numbers? They're not really 4 and 9. They are square numbers. Right? Square numbers. This is 3 squared down here. 3 squared. And the 3 corresponds, just like before, to the third. What's this guy? 2 squared. And the 2 corresponds to the half. OK. This one is a bit plain because he's one-dimensional, right? Two and three are really two to the power of one and three to the power of one. So if you could take a four-dimensional object, if you could imagine it, and divide it up into a bunch of other four-dimensional objects that were all half the size, how many would you expect to get out? You'd expect 16 smaller half-sized, excuse me, four-dimensional objects, okay? All right, now this is a totally different way of thinking about dimensions, right? That it's about splitting the objects and seeing how many you get versus the size, okay? 